It'd be really nice if we could look at a sequence like this, where the nth term is 3 minus n over n plus 1, and say, look, 3 is a constant sequence that converges to 3, n over n plus 1 is a sequence that converges to 1, and so this sequence, which is one of them minus the other, must converge to 3 minus 1, or 2. That would save us the time of always having to prove that a sequence like this converges using the definition. But we don't know if the limits of convergent sequences actually behave like this unless we prove it. We'll prove that if a n converges to a and b n converges to b, then the sequence defined like this, where the nth term is a n minus b n, converges to a minus b. So the difference of convergent sequences converges to the difference of the limits of those convergent sequences. This proof is extremely similar to the proof for the sum of convergent sequences, and we could also prove it by just using two other limit laws together, but we'll go ahead and prove this from scratch for the extra practice. In our proof, of course, we'll take an arbitrary epsilon greater than zero, and we'll want to show that the distance between terms of our sequence and what we hope the limit is, a minus b, is less than epsilon. In order to show that this is less than epsilon, we want to think about what we can control, what we can make arbitrarily small. By definition of a convergent sequence, since a n converges to a, we can make the absolute value of a n minus a arbitrarily small, and similarly, we can make the absolute value of b n minus b arbitrarily small. Then, if we can transform this expression into something consisting of this and this, we should be able to make that too arbitrarily small. We may begin by distributing this negative, which will give us that this is equal to the absolute value of a n minus b n minus a plus b. Since we're hoping to relate this to something in terms of these expressions, we might want to go ahead and move the minus a over with a n and move the plus b over with minus b n. Simply rearranging those terms gives us that this is equal to the absolute value of a n minus a plus b minus b n. Putting these in parentheses may make it clear that we can apply the triangle inequality theorem here. That tells us that the absolute value of the sum of two terms is less than or equal to the sum of their absolute values. So this is less than or equal to the absolute value of a n minus a, which we can make arbitrarily small, plus the absolute value of b minus b n, which is close. That's almost what we want. Thankfully, the order of subtraction within absolute value bars doesn't matter, so we can just go ahead and flip those around so that it's b n minus b. That's because changing the order of subtraction only changes the sign, not the magnitude, but since this is in absolute value bars, it's only going to measure the magnitude anyways. So this is good. We've got this expression that we want to show is less than epsilon. We know that it's less than or equal to this, so we want want to show that this sum is less than epsilon. In order to do that, we'll want both terms of this sum to be less than half epsilon. And thankfully, that's no problem at all, since we can make both of these terms arbitrarily small. So shrinking this and setting it to the side for a moment, let's go ahead and focus on these two terms. Because a n converges to a, we know that there exists a natural number, say big N1, so that for all n greater than big N1, the absolute value of a n minus a is less than epsilon over 2. Similarly, there exists a natural number big N2, so that for all n greater than big N2, the absolute value of Bn minus b is less than epsilon over 2. Remember what we have to do in a convergent sequence proof by 
definition is show that for any epsilon greater than zero, there exists a natural number big N so that every term of our sequence after the big nth term is within epsilon of the supposed limit. How big does our big N need to be in order for the proof to work? Well, since we want the absolute value of a n minus a to be less than half epsilon and the absolute value of b n minus b to be less than half epsilon, we want to make sure that big N is at least as big as n1 and n2, so we'll set big N equal to their maximum. So we let big N equal the maximum of big N1 and big N2. Then we consider N greater than big N. And now we can get right back to where we were. Remember, this expression is the distance between terms of our sequence and our supposed limit. And we showed that this is less than or equal to this, and we want this to be less than epsilon. How do we know that this is less than epsilon for all n greater than big N? Well, since n is greater than the maximum of big N1 and big N2, we know that n is greater than big N1 and n is greater than big N2. Thus, we have that the absolute value of a n minus a is less than epsilon over 2, so we can replace that with epsilon over 2 to make the expression bigger, and we know that the absolute value of b n minus b is less than epsilon over 2, so we can replace that with epsilon over 2 as well to make the expression bigger. This, of course, is equal to epsilon. So we have that for any epsilon greater than 0, we can find a number big N so that every term of our sequence after the big nth term is within epsilon of a minus b. Thus, if a n is a sequence converging to a and b n is a sequence converging to b, the sequence a n minus b n converges to a minus b. The difference of convergent sequences converges to the difference of the limits of those sequences. Mm -hmm.